about self because it gets really messed up. I've got abnormal psych. I've got social psych. I've got behavioral organizational psych. You get religion. You got uh, logic. I mean, logic plays a big part in self, but we don't really realize that until we start getting into some really upper level logic uh, theory and philosophy. Uh, behavioral. Behavioral is a huge, huge impact on behavioral psychology. Is a huge impact on um, identity because that's the environment. The environment shaping, and, and I literally use the word shaping because it's part of behavioral psychology's learning theory. It shapes you towards a uh, attitude, and this is what a lot of people call that determinism. That uh, oh, that's something that gets me. I don't, I don't, how do you argue with it? I just, I mean, the other way can be is that the software kind of, in some way, uh, transcends the hardware, like which is what baffles me. Like I've got no idea how free will can be in, in a world if we would accept physics as as a be all end all. And I think that's the the problem where I, I think basically I I hijacked concepts out of uh, Taoist mysticism, you know, mysticism and I, to be honest, mysticism and philosophy for the metaphysical principles of Taoism. You hijack that right out of their Eastern traditions. You say the Tao is ineffable, isn't it? Inexpressible, and you know it, but you can't express it. You're part of it, and you can't. Be part of it and try to separate yourself from it to examine it. And some of these ineffable concepts are hard to describe, but they're really reassuring psychologically to process this information. Because I have no problem using physics and and biology and physiology and psychology to explain self in a philosophical context and then reaching into metaphysics for uh, determinism versus free will versus these ideas. I don't know what the infatuation in the West is for sticking to one subject to the exclusion of all others and refusing to acknowledge that language that you could use. It's a very useful tool to use other people's language and to use other people's concepts. And I just, I have no problem stealing everything I can possibly find from any other discipline that helps me express myself. Along those lines, I already think it's uh, a great example is the idea of the Greeks having more than one word for love. Like, and it's not something that we can express without using more than one word in English, like, like paternal love or, or um, love of a friend or, or, yeah, yeah, or the you, love of a higher authority to someone with a, a lower standing. Right, the storage, you get storage, eros, um, storage, eros, agape, and then there's another one, philios. Mm. Philio. So that's the four languages you're talking about, or the four words in Greek. And each one of those words for love has a different expression for the reality of that. Like, and you were saying, brother, uh, filio, you know, that philios is family love, like within the family, and very close friends. You got storage, is like companions and comrades. You got eros, which is that romantic interest love, and then you've got uh, agape, which is that that Kantian, everybody is an end in themselves and not to be used for an ends to a means, respect for existence, for other people's ontological existence. That's what agape is. Um, people don't like to reframe it in Kantian terms, but I am Kantian. Kant, <laughs> uh, transcendental um, idealism and Kant is where I'm going to focus for that PhD. That's where all the writing is going to be done. And that's because I can comprehend Kant where other people seem to not be able to. And I don't know why they have such a hard time understanding what, to me, appear to be very simple subjects. So why not specialize in that if I can understand?